It's been kind of a crazy week. Maybe mag- ma- you know what magnanimous might be that you know, I did take full credit for the pump this week in in Bitcoin because you know I, I pulled out the green pants last week and we, we kind of predicted that it'd be a pretty good week, which it it has. It is all about the having, right? It's you know we had the demand shock. Price went up. Now we got the supply shock coming. And the supply shock, it's actually big. Because I think, I don't know if you guys put out the data, somebody put out the data, um, 69%, maybe it was a lie, uh, 69% of a BTC hasn't uh, moved in the last 12 months. Cryptocurrency investors have been swept up in a whirlwind of euphoria over the past week, with the fear and greed index for Bitcoin reaching a staggering 79 out of 100 its highest level since the digital assets peak of $69,000 in November 2021. This index, a composite of momentum, volatility, and volume data, serves as a reliable indicator of market sentiment, currently oscillating between greed and extreme greed. Fueling this surge in investor optimism is the remarkable success of spot Bitcoin ETFs. Since their debut on January 11th, these ETFs have significantly bolstered their Bitcoin holdings, collectively amassing around 264,000 bitcoins valued at over $13.5 billion. BlackRock's IBIT ETF leads the charge, holding over 43.89% of the total stash, while Fidelity closely follows with a share of approximately 31.76%. Despite the notable accumulation of bitcoins by these ETFs in just five weeks since inception, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust has been reducing its holdings, shedding around 161, 162 bitcoins since January 12th, 2024. Nevertheless, these ETFs have witnessed over $11 billion in inflows, highlighting the resounding success of this venture. As esteemed hedge fund manager Mark Yusko predicts further significant price gains for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies leading up to the 2024 halving event, excitement among investors continues to mount for the journey ahead. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. We had a we had an aggregate demand shift that's only going to accelerate, right? The the increasing demand for ETFs is is it's not gonna be linear, it's it's gonna be exponential. Now it'll take a while to get to the knee of the curve, but you know, people like Vanguard and uh uh UBS and Merrill Lynch eventually drop their prohibitions against the ETFs, more capital will flow. But even, even without, even with the largest firms still adamantly against, you've seen individuals and institutions, a big chunk of, of the BlackRock capital is coming from big places, you know, sovereign wealth funds, pension funds. Um, so that, that demand shock isn't going away. And there's 900 BTC a day produced Today, on April 8th, I think it's interesting that now the estimates are that the, the halvings are going to occur on the same day as the lunar, or the solar eclipse, which is kind of wild. You know, when it was going to be 420, everyone was all excited. And I think it's going to be 48 <laughs> now, it looks like uh, the number. But you know, we don't know for, for certain. But uh, if it does coincide with the, the solar eclipse, I think that that's kind of wild. Um, but that demand is, is challenged because this huge amount of coins, you, know, you, got, you got a million from Satoshi, whoever, and then you got estimates somewhere between three and a half and five million coins that are lost or stolen, you know, multi-sig that are stranded, whatever. And then you got 10 million held by individuals, most of them hodlers who I've said, you know, can pry it for my cold, dead fingers. Uh, the supply shock, though, we go from 900 to 450 a day. That's a big deal if that hodler group or hodler group, however you want to pronounce it, um, won't give up their coins and there's less coins for the miners to sell. The other problem is the miners haven't been selling all of their coins. Some of them have, but but some of them have been hoarding a little bit. So. The supply problem is is real and it's only going to get more acute. With the resounding success of spot Bitcoin ETFs, all coin investors are eagerly seeking out the next big opportunity. Many notable figures in the cryptocurrency space, including Real Vision CEO Raul Pal, 
are eyeing Ethereum ETFs as the next significant development. Pell firmly believes that, much like with Bitcoin ETFs, the SEC will be compelled to greenlight spot Ethereum ETF applications. SEC Chair Gary Gensler's comments in various interviews suggest the precedent for this approval process. Legal rulings in cases such as Grayscale's dispute with the SEC have highlighted the inconsistency in denying spot Bitcoin ETFs while approving Bitcoin futures ETFs, which are equally susceptible to market manipulation. Powell's stance aligns with this logic, advocating for the approval of Ethereum-based spot ETFs. Despite the optimism, there are doubts about Gensler's willingness to approve these applications, including those submitted by industry giants like BlackRock and Fidelity. In a recent interview, these concerns were reiterated, underscoring the uncertainty surrounding the SEC's stance on Ethereum ETFs. Well, there's the logic, and then there's the emotion. So the logic would say, hey, SEC, you ruled multiple times that Bitcoin and ETH were not securities. Therefore, if you approve the Bitcoin ETF, ipso facto, or, you know, ceteris paribus, you should, you know, approve the ETH ETF. That said, I watched, you know, GG on the, the, the tube the other day, and I would say logic has nothing to do with this. He was all emotion. It's tougher to tell because all things are not equal. You know, so one of the things that, that always happens in this part of the cycle so we're, you know, we're in the, the late stages of, you know, crypto summer. So, you know, June, we, we swap over into crypto fall and get the parabolic part. In that, that late stages, you, you see this kind of price action where Bitcoin becomes the lead because people are anticipating the halving. And then the others, particularly ETH, they tend to move in lockstep like at a ratio, you know, at one point it was like 10 to one or eight to one. And, and, and they just, they literally just move in lockstep. And then it, it filters down into the other coins too. And some of them actually then get on people's radar and then they actually have their little, little spiky moves. Um, and you saw that with, with Doge and Shiba in, in the last cycle, not so much this cycle, but at least people aren't talking about them as much. I don't see that, that silly little dog all the time. Um, but I think this time it's, it's frogs and, uh, and, and other things. I think in Bitcoin's case, and I, I haven't proven this in the sense of going to the, to the wallets, but I, uh, I, I shouldn't say I've seen the wallets that were accumulating Bitcoin in advance of the Bitcoin ETF approval. I will argue those were related to BlackRock at all that they were basically accumulating some that they could then go buy from um, and make a little profit too. Um, and maybe it was friends of the firm. Maybe it was hedge funds that they work with. Maybe it was, you know, I, again, I, I haven't done the forensics to find out who, but my guess is that was pretty, I mean, you saw it every day. And that was front running of a different kind. Like normally front running is, hey, I just want to get in because I know something's going to happen, like an earnings announcement, like like Coinbase, which we'll talk about. So there was a lot of front running going on because there were people who were pretty sure this was going to be a blow up number. And you saw it was going up every day into the earnings and then ended up even more after the earnings. But that's a different kind of front running than this. This, I believe, was getting supply because when the demand for the ETFs came in, I think people knew it was going to be hard to go find enough Bitcoin to buy. And so that's the, and that could be what's happening with ETH. So if people were doing the same kind of thing, then you'd have upward pressure. And you've seen ETH actually outperforming modestly. I mean, it's been pretty neck and neck, but outperforming modestly in the last few weeks. I probably lean that unlike the Bitcoin ETF, where you had pretty clear signaling by the, the sponsors that, yeah, we're, we're good. And, you know, the relentless meetings back and forth. I don't hear about lots of meetings and lawyers you know, billing, doing lots of billable hours on, on ETH. 
SEC Chair Gary Gensler appears staunchly opposed to approving several spot Ethereum ETF applications currently under review. Despite optimism from prominent investors like Larry Finn and Kathy Woods, who believe in the likelihood of SEC approval, Gensler remains steadfast in his stance. He asserts that the approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs does not automatically translate to support for other cryptocurrencies. In a recent interview with CNBC, Gensler clarified that the SEC's decisions are governed by established rules and regulations, emphasizing that they will not show favoritism toward any particular cryptocurrency. Despite this, market sentiment remains optimistic regarding the approval of Ethereum ETFs. Analysts from Grayscale, Bitwise, and Galaxy Digital estimate a 75% chance of approval by year-end, according to Bloomberg analyst James Sart. However, delays in the approval process are anticipated, given the SEC's recent postponement of decisions on Invesco US and Galaxy Ethereum ETFs. The crucial date to watch is May 23rd, VanEck's final deadline, as noted by Sart. Will the SEC be compelled to approve Ethereum ETFs in May, mirroring its actions with spot Bitcoin ETFs? And how might this impact prices as the bull market progresses? Share your thoughts and comments below, including your insights on Mark Yusko's interview. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.